I am really nervous. And I thought I'm just going to say it, because then it, like, I hope it evaporates. So my story starts on the emergency strip of the A16, the A16. I'm on my way from Amsterdam to Rotterdam, and I have to hurry because I'm the host of my own radio show, and we have like a tough subject tonight with all these guests coming to the studio. And I have to be on time, of course, to prepare. But instead, I am on the emergency strip of the highway, and I think I'm dying. I can't breathe, I'm panicking, I'm afraid. And I'm telling myself in my head, like, take control of this situation. You have to take control. Which, of course, it doesn't help at all. It only makes me panic more. And I think, okay, what do I do? And then I'm reminded um, of something that my father says to me a lot these days. He says, instead of trying to control all this madness and this panic, you have to surrender to it. When you surrender to it, everything gets less and less. So, I do this. And out of it comes an insight that I want to share with you today. But before I do it, I have to take you back a little bit into time, to August 2014. I am writing my first book. It's August, I'm writing my first book. And I call my father every day crying. Because the book is almost done. And the story I tell in the book is a story that I'm very ashamed of. I'm very afraid because once the book is done, I have to hand it in to my publisher, and then it's going to be published, and everyone will know my shameful story. So I'm crying to my father every day, and he keeps telling me basically the same thing every day. He smiles, I can hear him smiling through the phone, which I love. He smiles and he says, stop thinking that you chose to tell this story. This story has chosen you to be told. So I want you to have faith. Relax, stop panicking, stop controlling everything, stop trying to control everything. And that helps. And my father is a big process of this book that I'm writing because he helps me a lot. The name of the book is Het Waarom Meisje. Translated, it means the why girl. And it's a book about sexual violence and about the shame that surrounds sexual violence. And that's shame that I know only too well, because the book is based on my own experience. And in writing the book, a lot of stuff happens. I have to look at all these painful things that happen that I, of course, would rather like to ignore or not talk about. But also in the process of writing the book, um, new things happen. I'm very open about it with my and talk about it with my father. And we notice that the more we are honest about it, the more we are open about it, the less we seem to be defined by the story, by the stuff that happened. And it's a tough subject, not only because sexual violence is a tough subject, but it also has a lot to do with the identity of the violator. Because the violator was a man that both me and my father thought we knew very well. He's somebody that my father grew up with. It was somebody that we invited to our house and we shared meals with him and also birthdays. And it was, in truth, somebody that we loved. So the book is not only about sexual violence, it's only about the betrayal we feel. And in recent studies in the Netherlands, it is shown that in the case of sexual violence, the violator is in 80% of the time somebody that is very well known to the victim. So we talk about this, and we talk about this, and my father keeps telling me that, remember every time you, when you get scared, you didn't choose to write this story, this, cho this story chose you to be told, and also to not only help yourself, but to maybe help others be more open. And so I think, when it's almost done, I think, okay, I was asked for this talk when it's almost done, and I think, okay, maybe this is what I'm going to share, that it is the stories that choose us, and that we have to be brave in sharing it, even though 
Sometimes our stories are surrounded by lots of chaos and shame. So I'm thinking, yes, okay, I have my idea. But as it often happens, every time when you think that you've got it all figured out, life comes and kicks you in the balls with it. And so this happens because three days after I hand in my book to my publisher to be published, we get this terrible news. <laughs> We get this terrible news. We hear that my father has cancer. <laughs> and all of a sudden we are right back, right back in the chaos. My father has lung cancer and the prospects are very grim. <sighs> so we go into the hospital, out of the hospital, we try everything, but in the end, within three months, my father, he dies. And in the last month of his life, he doesn't want to be in the hospital. He wants to be with his children, he says. So me and my fiance, James, we take him into our house. My father, he says, my children zijn als een warme deken om me heen. My children are around me like a warm blanket, and this is, I feel, where I need to be. And so we do everything we can. We bathe him, we pray with him. We have to liquefy all his food because radiation took away some of his ability to swallow. And we do it, and we are honored to do so. And most of all, we tell him that everything is going to be fine, which is not the case. And I feel in this chaos that I'm in. I'm very panicked because my father was always the Denzel Washington of my life. He was my hero. He would always know what to do, when to do it, when not to do something. And now all of a sudden the hero needs a hero. And how do you become a hero overnight? We have no idea. We try, but we really, we have no idea. So in November, the, th the 30, the 23rd of November in 2014, my father, he dies. And that's only three months ago. And I have to be quite honest that our lives are still pretty much in chaos. And we're afraid and we don't know what to do. I'm in a place where I don't really know what to do. And I can tell you it's a pretty uncomfortable place to be when you're on a TED stage. Because you want to share an idea and you want to know what you're talking about. So for a second there, I thought, well, I can do this. I cannot go and come and share my story because I am in chaos. And the minute I think it, I can hear my father's voice. And he says what he's always been saying to me. Stop trying to control the chaos, surrender to it. Because inside that chaos is a story that has chosen you to be told, to be shared. So I figured, okay, I'm going to come on to the stage and I'm bringing it with me, my chaos. I'm bringing my chaos and I'm being honest about it. I'm showing it. I'm not lying about it. I'm not ignoring it. I'm not pretending it's not there. I'm bringing my chaos. And that's a bit tricky, I have to say. It feels very vulnerable. So right before, and actually it's also vulnerable because I don't really know why I'm doing this. This is the trouble with chaos. When you're in it, you don't really know what to do and you don't know why you should share it. What is going to be the effect? What's going to be the value, the purpose of sharing it? But right before I go on to, right before I decided I would take the stage, um, on a night that I was particularly anxious, my father is not here anymore, so what do I do? I reach for my television mom, I start watching Oprah. Of course. <laughs> so I'm watching Super Soul Sunday, which is a great show. Everyone should watch it. Um, and one of Oprah's guests is a guy named Mastin Kip. And he's the founder of a website called thedailylove.com. And Mastin, he repeats a phrase that apparently Jesus said once during his lifetime. And the phrase is something like this. If you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth 
will save you. But if you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. And for me, it was just what I needed to hear. So I'm here. I'm sharing my chaos. I'm not really sure what is the purpose yet of this whole talk. I'm so sorry. <laughs> But I know that I have to honor the chaos and have to honor the story that is in here by sharing it. And this is what I want to give to you. That when you are in the chaos, sometimes you don't know why you should share it. But please share your story because it's the story that has chosen you. And I think, I'm not sure, I'm going to find out, but I think that if you have the courage to share that story instead of destroying you, it's going to save you. Thank you.